QuickBooks Desktop 2024 QuickBooks Software Types and Versions. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. When thinking about applying accounting software to our business or possibly just learning accounting software, one of the first questions which will inevitably come up is which type of accounting software do I want to be working with? Which is a complex question because there's a lot of different types of accounting softwares out there, each of them having their pros and their cons what we would like to do here is try to think of a system where we can take this complex question break it down into digestible chunks possibly visualizing it as kind of like a tree diagram so we can analyze on different levels of that type of tree diagram this is not the only way that you might want to do these comparisons but it is one way that we could do these types of comparisons so obviously one type of comparison you might want to do is to be looking at different types of leading uh, companies that have accounting software such as Intuit, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, whether it be the desktop and online version and make your comparisons that way. And then within each of uh, the companies that you're looking at, in our case, of course, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, you might then compare the types of uh, software that they have within them. The major two types of softwares these days, you can have two broad categories of software. One being, is it a desktop oriented type of software? Two being, is it an online type orientation of the software? The desktop will typically be defined as you have the actual data file on your computer, which has some pros and cons to it, versus the online version, in which case you have the data file on the company uh, server of the company that you purchased it from, in this case, into it. Now, this same kind of tree diagram, you can compare to other companies other than into it as well. If you're looking at competitors, you could ask the question, is their primary product an online version of the software or a desktop version of the software? And that's one way that you could uh, start to, to make your comparisons make a little bit more sense uh, and, and have apples to apples type comparisons. So in this case, we're looking at Intuit and we want to just compare the desktop versus the online. This course will be orientated towards the desktop, but we want to just first take a look at this comparison. And then once we're in the desktop, uh, we can take a look at more uh, kind of versions within the desktop. So once you've decided, say on the desktop, for example, then you have different versions, such as the standard version versus uh, the enterprise advanced versions and specializations within uh, the advanced version. Okay, so some comparisons. On the desktop side, one of the big questions coming up is, is there a risk that Intuit's gonna be canceling the desktop version? So there's a lot of debate over this. If you look at the marketing for QuickBooks, you can see that they're highly marketing the online version, at least with regards to the market for the pro product. So for the standard kind of small to mid size type of business. Now note, it's unlikely it seems at this point in time that the enterprise version of the desktop, which is gonna be like the more advanced version, which Intuit kind of sometimes thinks of as though it's a separate thing, right? So if they say QuickBooks Desktop, they might be talking about QuickBooks Pro Plus. If you say QuickBooks Enterprise, it's still QuickBooks Desktop, but that's like their advanced type version. And it seems like it at this point in time, at least it thinks, seems like that one is here to stay because it has so much of those specialty items. So if I was to make the guess here on what Intuit is trying or thinking to do, 
it seems by their marketing, which you can see if you go to their actual web page, that they're trying to gear most people that are on the small to midsize to the online version and then trying to use the desktop version more for the advanced users that would be going towards uh, the enterprise and the specialty type of areas. And, and it looks like they're trying to phase out the small to mid-sized businesses on the desktop version. Will they be able to do that? I don't know. It seems like that's been their plan ever since the online version has been, uh, has been out there. And, you know, as you can see by the fighters up here, the, the online version has the reach and whatnot. So they were kind of expecting the knockout uh, to happen like in the first round for the desktop version. But the desktop version has some crazy moves and whatnot. And a lot of people like the desktop version. So they haven't really been able to knock out the desktop version yet. And it seems like now the online version is trying to take advantage of its longer reach. And it's like stepping back and it's trying to wear out the desktop version by, by hitting it from a range with their marketing at this point in time. But who knows? We don't really know if the desktop versions are gonna go away, but it seems to me that the, that the online or the desktop enterprise will still be uh, applicable on the advanced side of things, which be for the larger companies. And I still think it's gonna be difficult for them to completely remove the, even the standard desktop because there's advantages to them that many people like, which we'll talk more about here. Okay, so subscription model, subscription model. Notice that one of the desktop, one of the differences between the desktop and online version used to be that you can buy the uh, desktop version at a one price, and then you can use it for multiple years. And you can see why that would appeal to certain bookkeepers and businesses that didn't want to pay for the new version because they just need the standard use of a standard software for multiple years and older versions of the software did quite fine, did quite well. It, it was also useful for bookkeepers that had like small clients that didn't have any special needs because then they can buy like one version of the software and they can basically take care of the bookkeeping needs for multiple uh, companies with that version of the software and not even have to update it and whatnot. Now, obviously on the Intuit side of things, you can imagine they wouldn't like that because if if they're trying to support multiple versions of the software, that's gonna be more difficult on their side. So what they did is they moved even the desktop version to a subscription model so that you kind of have to update it each year. Now, you might still be able to buy QuickBooks desktop somewhere before the date that they, subs that they switched to the subscription model in which case, you know, you can, it'd be good to practice with that kind of software, if nothing else, because, because it's still good. So, I mean, it still does all the basic kind of things and you can practice with it, but going forward, it looks like everyone's going to be on the subscription thing. Now you would think on, on the other hand, on the other side of things, you would think that after changing to the subscription model into it, it would be easier for Intuit to keep the desktop version because now they don't have to deal with supporting all the prior versions. They can just update everyone the same way they do online. So will that impact them as to whether they're gonna try to remove the desktop version? Not for the enterprise, they're probably gonna keep that, but just for like the pro, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so multiple company files for one purchase. On the desktop versus only one company file per purchase for the online. Now, obviously in certain areas, being able to have multiple company files with one purchase of the desktop, even if you have to pay annually in a subscription model is beneficial. Because for example, if you're the type of bookkeeper that has multiple companies that they do bookkeeping for with one accounting software, then that's great right that you're gonna you're gonna be able to do multiple company files and only pay the one for the one software because you because it's kind of like using microsoft word for example you can make multiple word documents and with one file the word documents being equivalent in this analogy to the company files whereas with the online version you have to purchase a new online company file new online company per new company which so you could see what the advantages would be now for the for for Intuit, of course, you can see why they would want to have and force everybody to purchase a new company file if you're going to be starting up 
a new company. So I would think that would be possibly one of the tension areas where you have a lot of bookkeepers which are saying, hey, look, I have a business model that works with what I'm doing right now with the one company file and and online saying, you know, we want to we want to have everybody who starts a new company file to pay for a different subscription. Also, the fact that you can have multiple company files is great for practicing and testing things. So it's great for us from a student standpoint. So if you're just using this to practice with having multiple company files that you can open is really useful because then you can open a company file, you can practice a certain thing, and then you can open a different company file and practice something different. And even if this was your own file, for example, for your company, if you wanted to test something out like the bank feeds, for example, or test something out like a software integration, it would be great to have a sandbox to do that with before doing it to your actual company file. If you back up your company file, make a separate company file and then test these things out, it, it's a great tool. Whereas that's more difficult to do with the online version. With the online version, I can't really just make a separate company file as easily and play with it. There are alternatives. They have the QuickBooks test drive and stuff, but they don't have as much functionality and you don't have as much customization than if you were to make your own company file. So static backup files versus data stored on secure server. Now there's two main things that come with this backup files. When we have backup files, traditionally we think of those as we need them so that we don't lose our data. That's one use of them. But another use of them is that we can use the backup files to restore our data to a prior point in time. And we can use the backup files to set up separate company files so that we can practice with having a sandbox to kind of practice with. So first, if we think of it as just uh, having secure data, the argument from Intuit is the online version is actually better, they say, because your data is stored on the Intuit servers and the Intuit servers are, have, are being triple backed up and everything. So the servers should actually be more secure than your computer and therefore the online version is more secure than the desktop version. Now that may be true, but I still think the desktop version can be pretty secure if you properly do your backups. Uh, very secure, you know, if you properly do your backups because what you want to do on your backup files is back them up to a separate uh, drive or online. In other words, you could set up your backups to basically do automatic backups and back them up to say an online cloud or at least a separate external drive so they're not on your hard drive. And you have a pretty, you have a very secure, I would think, backup system. Now, the other thing that's a benefit with the static backups on the other hand is that I can make multiple backups. So if I'm backing up every night, now I have a nightly backup, which allows me, if there's a problem, to restore to any point that I want. Now, the online is trying to implement some of this ability to restore to a prior point. And if you get the advanced online, I think they have the ability to do that, but it's still not as easy as with the, with the desktop version. Plus, if I want to restore the online version, it might actually rewrite the file that I'm in. So if I want to go back to a prior point, it's going to rewrite the file. Well, what if I don't want to actually go back to the prior point, but I want to look at the prior point to see what's different and then to see whether or not I want to go back to it. It's going to be more difficult to do that if you only have one company file. Whereas if you can make multiple files with the desktop, it would be like making a separate Word document or a separate Excel file and then having a sandbox to test out with it to see what went wrong. So it's not just that I might want to restore to that date. It might be that I want to see what happened from that date or when something happened from what date to the current date. When did it go wrong and troubleshoot in that way? The static backup files are better to do that uh, with. Also, if you have an online course like we're doing here, then the static backup files possibly can be used to jump forward in our practice problem, for example, allowing you to have the exact data that we have on our side without having to work through a very long practice problem in order to get there. So from a practice standpoint, 
from a sandbox standpoint and that kind of stuff, the static backup files are actually still have a lot of advantages over the online storage on the server. Advantages that possibly are not simply just the losing of the data, but rather using the, the backup files in other ways that can be very useful. So the desktop version, as I mentioned with the backup and multiple company files, those being the major reasons, the desktop version is great to practice with. So it's great for a course like even if even if they got rid of the desktop version, which again, they're going to keep the, the the enterprise version, you would think. So it's still good to practice with and will be in use because the enterprise version has the same layout in essence as the other desktop version. It just has more functionality in certain areas. But even if they got rid of all of it, it would still be a great tool to uh, to practice with because of the fact that you can have multiple files because of the fact that we can restore these backup files to a certain point in the practice problem. So take that online desktops, not KO jet just through like an a do a kick. On, hold on. I got in the street fighter. In any case, the desktop has a consistent design, whereas the online version has a changing design. Either of these can be seen as a pro or a con depending on how you look at it. But from the desktop perspective, even if you go back many years into the past and look at the layout of the desktop version, it will look quite similar to the layout currently in 2024. So from a consistency standpoint, that's great because you know where things are located and that's not going to change all that much. Whereas with the online version, it's changing all the time. Advocates of the online version would say, that their ability to change it because it's a web-based type software allowing them to do kind of a b type of testing helps them to optimize the layout of the online uh, website and make changes to improve it so again there's pros and cons with it in my opinion i've used the desktop version for a long time the layout system is well laid out in my opinion it has the drop downs that are similar to what you saw in microsoft word before they had the ribbon with the online version. The layout is fine as well, but it has changed a lot. And some of the changes you can argue as to whether they're being optimized changes or they're kind of catering to a certain audience. They've changed things like the terminology, for example. They often move buttons around and whatnot. So hopefully they get to a position where they find the ideal or optimized uh, website but my feeling is that they're never going to get there because the developers always want to make changes. They get paid to make changes to the website. So I think that might be driving the fact that they're making changes basically for changes sake. So I think it's always been a good, it's always been easy to use in my opinion, but you have to basically deal with the fact that they're going to move stuff around from time to time. They're going to name things differently and you just go with the flow, man. Everything, the functionality will still be there, but it might be located somewhere else and they might be using some new trendy language for a time period and whatnot and, <laughs> and that's the way it goes desktop version enterprise may fit special needs like inventory tracking better so with the desktop version you have certain things that the desktop version is better at one of them might be the inventory tracking we'll talk about some of the specializations with the desktop version which might be more applicable to certain types of industries as they get larger typically right so that's why the enterprise version of the desktop doesn't look like it's really in danger of being canceled whereas the non-enterprise or the or the standard QuickBooks for smaller companies is the one where more questions come up as to what is happening with Intuit based on kind of like their marketing strategy, which clearly seems to be guaranteed people and steering people in that section of the market towards the online. So uh, with the online also has its own special kind of cases, which we'll look at in a second. It's really good with integrations oftentimes because it's a web-based software and with the bank feeds are, are things that it's quite good at. Uh, more difficult to work from different locations. So if you're uh, getting the desktop version, it's going to be on your computer. So it's located on your computer and therefore it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work remotely. Whereas the online version being cloud-based is going to be easier to log in remotely. Now, again, there's pros and cons with this because if you're in a bigger company with the desktop version, you might be able to set it up so that you could still have remote access to the 
to to it, even though it's going to be on a server, for example, or something like that, or on a, a static computer as opposed to on Intuit's servers. Uh, whereas the online is on the Intuit servers, and therefore it's going you, the hub point is going to be on the Intuit servers. Uh, some people would probably argue that the desktop version is more secure that it's not on the Intuit servers if you have a solid kind of setup process, because uh, they would have to actually hack into your computer basically to get access to uh, your files. Whereas if you're on the online version, you would think that if they can log into your account, then they can get into your files. So the the server if of Intuit is secure, but you want to make sure you have the double multi-factor authentication and all that kind of stuff set up so that people can't access your account that way by basically having the password uh, and and uh, that kind of thing. Also, uh, you have to be careful, of course, connecting to the cloud-based software from Wi-Fi areas and, 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 and that kind of thing. So even if you want to do that, you want to be careful of accessing your data from like a coffee shop you want to make sure you have the vpn and and all that kind of stuff if you're accessing sensitive information from uh different locations whereas if you're on a desktop version i think it works quite well if you just do your bookkeeping and you just have it on your computer so that you're not accessing it from anywhere in the world it's on your actual com <laughs> actual computer and again so that could possibly lead you to feel a little bit more secure about it. But in any case, bank feed may be a little more difficult to use versus the online version connects to the bank very well. So both of them have the ability to connect to your banks, be able to pull in the data from the banks to your system. Uh, however, because the online version is online, it's more of a seamless type of process uh, to do that. So the desktop version is pretty good. It's not, it, it works, it works almost as well but you might have to take one extra step to say i want you to import the data uh, from the bank feeds and also when you update the software every year you might have an, an added step to make sure that the bank feeds are properly aligned whenever that happens whereas the, the online version once you set it up it's pretty much uh, connected uh, pretty pretty nicely Add on apps may be more difficult to use for the on for the desktop versus the online for the same reason desktop version you might have access to add on apps that might give you more special features within QuickBooks uh, but because it's a desktop software it might not be as easy to integrate certain types of apps whereas if you're on the online version then you might it's easier to set up the online version you would think to be able to be adoptable to other add-on type of apps. Now you want to be careful with what type of add-on apps that you're going that you want to be using. I think the online version can also lead people to basically do things that they probably that they might not want to do or might want to think about a bit more before using other types of apps and whatnot. But th so there could be pros and cons with that. But in general, if if you're trying to look at other integrations within QuickBooks with other apps then uh then you then you might it might be easier for some of those on the online version than the desktop okay so once we if we choose the desktop version then we get into what kind of desktop versions do we want so the standard desktop is the pro premiere plus so that's going to be kind of equivalent to quickbooks online but the desktop version that's the one that's for small to mid-sized businesses which uh, is is you would think into it seems to be steering those types of businesses towards the online and that's where the question comes up are they trying to steer everybody off of it and then cancel it right so that and so but it's basically the same format as the enterprise but the enterprise is for the more advanced uh, companies or bigger companies that have specialized type needs so so it's still good to use any desktop version if you want to learn it because the advanced version, the enterprise version doesn't look like it's going away because it's going to be there. And all of the normal stuff that's in Pro Premier is also going to be in the larger packages. It's just that the larger packages have more specializations. So within the enterprise version, uh, then you have options such as the general business, 
a contractor. So they have enterprise that's going to be set up more specifically towards the industry of contractors, manufacturing and wholesale. So there's special needs with like contractors because they might have like a job cost kind of system, for example, and manufacturers might have a process cost system, which have special types of needs as well as wholesale versus retail sales, not for profit could have specialized needs. So at least the terminology for not for profits is going to be sometimes different uh, than the for profit professional services and then retail. And so these are kind of like the subgroups of uh, QuickBooks enterprise that you can go into. So the, again, the general tree that you want to think about when thinking about the software is what company do I want to be working with comparing like into it to other providers of the software and then within the company or even uh, this might be your first question do i want to use online cloud-based software or desktop software do i want the software on my computer or do i want it on the cloud and as you think about that question you could apply that then also to the the different companies like intuit versus other companies cloud-based cloud-based versus desktop desktop and then and then if you decide on a particular type such as we here on the desktop if we choose the desktop then the question is what kind of desktop version do i want these are going to be a lot more similar than if i'm looking desktop versus cloud based desktop versus cloud based very different they're almost like completely different software you can almost think of them as though they were different companies right because they're going to be very different look and feel although they'll have the same kind of general functionality. When you get into just the desktop, then you're kind of looking as though you, you have one tier level and then they're giving you perks as you, as you change. That's one way you can kind of think of it. We're not going into the different aspects of the online version because this course is focused on the desktop. So now we're on the desktop version and you can say, well, you have the basic version and then you can kind of upgrade to the enterprise. If you upgrade to enterprise, then you have specialized uh, fields that you could have just your general specialization and you might even be able to specialize above and beyond that as you go into these uh, the more advanced enterprise uh, users usually for larger companies with specialized needs